As an autistic artist or artistic autist, I tend to do things the same way over and over again, which is great for practicing skills, but sometimes I like to try and push myself to do things a little bit differently so I can learn something new and allow my art dolls to evolve. Right now I'm working on dressmaking skills. This hasn't gone too well in the past, so I'm easing myself back into it, making a bead jointed doll in a cute drop waist dress. I should really make a pattern, but I'm just going to wing it. I'm probably going to regret that, aren't I? Artistic artist. Let me know in the comments if you're also an artistic artist. This doll is based off my 19 centimeter template, so she's going to be quite small. I'm stuffing all the pieces with some polyester fiber and jointing the limbs with some metal beads. I want to make a dress that will fit onto the body without the arms. Then I'll bead joint the shoulders over it. So I've made the arm pieces from some blue star print fabric that will look like part of the dress. Doing it this way means the bead joints will be visible on the finished doll and I don't have to hide these pretty metal beads under long sleeves. Plus, sewing tiny sleeves onto a bodice is a bit of a nightmare and I'm not ready to try that again yet. I'm attaching the head to the body with a button joint. One button goes on the back, that's going to be hidden under the dress. Then the thread goes up through the neck to a second button on top of the head. The tension of the thread between the two buttons holds the head in place securely and gives it a sort of tilting movement. Before I sew the legs to the body, I want to paint some shoes on. I've mixed some blue acrylic paint with a bit of fabric medium. I'm just giving her some simple ballet flats. I'd love to give my dolls real handmade shoes, but unless I can find some elves to come in at night and do that for me, it's not going to happen anytime soon. The legs are attached to the body with a small stitch at each side. It's basically a hinge joint, but I'm keeping them quite loose, so there'll be a bit of side to side flexibility.
I fasten the thread off on the side, just above the hip. That'll be hidden by the clothing. Now, before I can attach the arms, I need to make the dress. I've sewn a simple rectangle shape for the bodice part and another larger rectangle shape for the skirt. I've gathered that up and stitched it onto the bodice. So far, so good. I've measured the bodice part to fit around the hips. Hopefully this will all match up, then I can just stitch it together up the back. Quilting clips make this so much easier. I've machine sewn the bottom part of the skirt together, now to see how it fits. That's all matched up quite well. On a removable dress, there'd be a fastener here, but this is going to be fixed in place, so I'm going to hand stitch it together. It's a little bit loose. I was hoping I'd be able to pull it in enough at the back, but it's not sitting quite right, so I'm going to have to take it in a bit at the sides. Again, I'm using the quilting clips to hold everything in place so I can see where I need to adjust it. These are quite inexpensive and they make it a lot easier to position the fabric without distorting it. I'll put a link to where you can get them in the description. Okay, I've brought the shoulders in a bit. That should now fit without gaping at the front. That looks good. I'm just going to pin it in place, then I'll ladder stitch up the back with some top stitch thread. If you're enjoying watching this little one take shape, don't forget to hit the like button and let me know. This helps a video get seen by more people. You can also subscribe if you like so you don't miss the next one. The arms are attached with a thread that goes right through the body, out at the shoulders and through those beads at the tops of the arms. This gives the shoulders quite a lot of movement. I'll put a link at the top of the screen to another video where I explain the jointing methods I use in a lot more detail. I'm adding some line detail to the face with Derwent Line Maker pens. This is something that ends up looking quite similar on most of my dolls. I've got into the habit of drawing the eyeliner in a certain way and I just kind of do it without thinking about it too much. 
I do try and vary it a bit though, so they all have a slightly different personality. I'm using some super chunky acrylic yarn for the hair. This is a gorgeous rich blue shade from the Signet Seriously Chunky in Metallics range. As usual, I'm needle felting it in with the Clover pen style tool and three 38 gauge needles. The needles are from Heidi Feathers. I keep felting in rows until most of the head is covered, then it'll need styling a bit at the top. She's going to have a side parting, so I'm felting these bits in with a second tool that's got two needles in it to get a straight line. Then it'll all need unravelling and brushing out. This yarn takes so long to brush out. I don't want to rush it and risk pulling it out at the roots, so I'm taking my time with it. I was going to trim this, but I actually really like the longer length, so I'm going to leave it as it is. I've named this little one Alyssa Dark Sky. If you'd like to learn more about the jointing techniques I use for my art dolls, you're going to want to watch this video next, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Artistic Artist.